One of the things that I want to do today is now that you've gotten a chance to look at the reading by Cresswell on understanding some of the big concepts in geography such as place, uh, space, and landscape, I want to try to define geography and look at some of the other concepts that we might be using throughout this quarter. So first, to think about what geography is, um, geography often is uh, confused by people. Uh, they often think it's geology, which is the study of rocks, but geography means earth writing. And so geographers are interested in where things are located in the world, why they're there, um, and how places relate to each other. Um, so a important definition of geography that I like to use is by this fellow called Isaac Bowman and the definition is geography tells what is where, why, and what of it. So pretty straightforward but the key aspect there is where things are located. Another definition of geography calls it a science that deals with the earth and its life, especially the description of land, sea, air, the distribution of plant and animal life, including man and his industries, with reference to the mutual relations of these diverse elements. Wow, so pretty much everything. You can see that this is a very broad discipline, uh, but one of the key aspects of it, again, is where things are located and the relationship between those different types of things. So when we look at geography, there's sort of three key elements that are foundational to understanding it. First is the spatial variation of phenomena over the surface of the Earth. So again, where things are located. A second focus is on the ecological relationships between humans and the environment. And a third is a focus on particular places often talked about through the realm, uh, through the idea of regions, which we'll uh, focus on a lot since this is world regional geography. So thinking about the importance of geography, um, geographic study will hopefully give us a chance to appreciate the variety of people and places throughout the world, to understand relationships between different communities in the world, and help with uh, regional, national, and global development. This image kind of gives you a sense of all the different aspects within geography. As we defined geography earlier, it was a very, very broad discipline. And so within this um, graphic, you can see geography broken down into a couple different realms. We have physical geography, which focuses on the physical environment, um, human geography, which looks at human social systems, and geographic techniques, which might be things like mapping, GIS. If you look here, hopefully you'll find some sort of overlap with some of the tools and skills that you need in whatever job it is that you do, or whatever it is you happen to be studying. Within the last five years or so, a lot of folks have talked about this notion of a spatial turn. This is the idea of more and more folks finding an, the importance of space and place as key to understanding different problems and trying to find solutions that fit into local contexts. Um, one of the key things then in the spatial turn is access and, and ability for people to use um, tools for spatial analysis and hopefully we're able to build your spatial analysis toolkit as we go throughout the quarter. So what do geographers actually do? Um, well, we can look at how geographers use different skills to think geographically. So first we want to understand how to ask geographic questions, where things are located, how did they come to be where they are, and why are they important, and then understanding the relationships between these different types of things. Next, we want to think about what sort of information geographers use. So data about locations, uh, looking at the human and physical characteristics of different locations, and then trying to understand the conditions and activities of people who live in these places. Some of the images that you see on, these pa on this page are um, images from field work that's been undertaken by Ohio State geographers. So on the top left we have um, field work in southeastern Ohio trying to understand the distributions of forests. Below that we have physical geographers who are, uh, have drilled out um, the core from the bottom of a lake to try to analyze that and see what sort of changes have occurred in climate over time. Um, 
to the top right in this picture, we have uh, an Ohio State geographer who's in interviewing um, a fellow down in Mexico about um, different sort of uh, political movements in that area. And then below that, we have an image that an Ohio State geographer took during her field work in uh, the rainforest in South America, trying to understand the relationships between indigenous people and um, resource extracting uh, companies such as um, oil developers. Next, once geographers have gathered this information, they can organize it in a variety of ways. One of the key ones that geographers use is visually organizing information into maps, um, geographic information systems like you heard about in the video that you watched in the first week, um, graphs, other types of visual representations. Also, geographers use a lot of written forms of representation, um, writing up interviews, reports, um, articles, things like that. Now to analyze this information, geographers often look for patterns and different processes that are revealed in the information that they've gathered. Um, they bring together what they've found and try, try to sort of synthesize various explanations. Once we get to the point of answering these geographic questions, we can make inferences based on the information that we've organized. Um, we can try to distinguish different generalizations from the information that we found and where these generalizations might apply and where they don't. And then often new questions emerge from these conclusions. So now that we have a sense of what geographers might do, I want to elaborate a little bit on some of the tools and concepts that um, are important in geography. In the Cresswell reading, we talked about, or we were introduced to ideas of place, space, and landscape, which are very important key ideas in geography. So one of the things I want to ask you to do is, now you have these uh, definitions, to try to be able to come up with your own examples of how to apply these concepts. So a place, a space, a landscape. Now to move beyond that, Here's a, a few other concepts that are going to be important going forward. The first is the idea of maps. Now, this is a pretty straightforward concept. Um, a lot of us use maps in our everyday lives, whether it's at the old-fashioned paper maps or virtual maps that are on our smartphones or on our GPS, those sorts of things. We can think about a map as a graphical representation of a cultural or physical environment. Now, here's a couple. Uh, examples of map images. Uh, the one on the left is quite obviously an artistic representation and not very useful if you are trying to find your way around Brooklyn. Um, the one on the right is a historic representation of um, people's it, from people's initial contact um, with the African continent and what they thought the geography of Africa looked like at that time, what sorts of resources people found important there. The process of making maps is called cartography, and it can be thought of as both a science and an art of map ma making. So what goes into that is the collection of data to try to understand where things are located, what is where, and then a process of designing maps and actually making the construction of maps. This used to be a lot more difficult process before we had computer technology um, to be able to uh, make maps on a sort of cheap mass scale. Now there's a lot of different ways that we use maps, um, whether they're the physical maps or virtual maps. Um, wayfinding is very important, getting us from uh, one place to another. Um, government and tourist maps let us know where resources are. They also sort of make claims for space. A lot of us um, think about, um, say, the country that we're from, and we imagine an image based on a map of what that looks like. Also, tourist maps tell us what sort of features we might want to visit in a particular place. And then we also use a lot of virtual maps, and this kind of links back to the video that we watched last week. Um, so things like geographic information systems for map representations, um, GPS global positioning systems, um, in our again, in our phones, in our cars, telling us where we're going. And then we also use uh, virtual maps such as video game maps that you know sort of put us into a virtual world and help us find our way there. One of the important things to keep in mind with maps is that they're made by people, so they're a social construction. And 
the what goes into them then are the social relations that people have, um, all their biases, all their flaws go into map making. So you shouldn't think of them as sort of an objective reality, but uh, a process that's been made by human hands. And as I said, historically, the process of map making was often something that very few people had the, um, the power and the technology um, to do. So it was often something that was controlled by um, elites and often used to um, take control of space. So for example, um, drawing a line on a map and saying that this area belongs to your country when there's plenty of other people there that would disagree is a sort of act of claiming space through map making. Also maps have been used for things like surveillance. Um, so being able to tell uh, giving uh, sort of spatial information on what resources are available in a place so outsiders to, can come in and be able to extract those resources. Maps are also really important about telling you where you can and can't be. And we often grow up with uh, particular map visualizations that we see over and over again. Um, this one pictured here that's also shown in your book is maybe a different way than you're used to envisioning the world. Um, rather than seeing Europe in the center and a sort of North Pole, South Pole uh, projection, this map uses the North Pole as the center and you see the continents spread around that. So a different way of seeing the world. And with this different way, you can understand um, Asia and North America as being you know, perhaps much closer to each other than you would with the typical map projection you might be used to seeing. Another example of how we might um, use map visualizations and represent the same thing in different ways um, is this map of the 2008 presidential election. We have the different states represented as red and blue depending on whether the voters um, went for Republicans or Democrats in the majority. And so with this you see kind of a stark distinction between red states and blue states. But if we move on to this next map, um, what they've done here is rather than have a uh, stark red and blue um, def uh, delineation between states, we have a sort of purple to show a sort of gradation um, in the vote rather than having it go one way or the other. And you see most of the United States is really purple rather than red or blue. So thinking about maps as a social construction, there is a selection process that happens. Uh, people decide what to show, what not to show. People decide how to represent things. Also important is thinking about how money relates to map making. Businesses uh, can make maps and use maps to try to draw people to their establishments, um, to target customers, things like that. And if you think about it as you use your smartphone for wayfinding, often um, if you search for things like food or restaurants in a particular area, the places that are going to pop up are places that have um, a relationship, perhaps a paid advertising relationship um, with the company who's uh, doing the serving of the mapping. Maps are also important as political symbols. They create a visual image um, of a particular country, they establish borders, and they also sort of separate us from them and give people a sense of identity.